the church say amen. amen. As we began our worship service this morning, it is only appropriate that we bow for a uh, prayer of invocation. Gracious God, we truly thank you for yet another day in the land of the living. We're grateful this morning, oh God, that you woke us up and started us on our way. We are so appreciative, oh God, that when we went to bed last night, our bed was not our cooling board. And so we are enthusiastic this morning with yet another chance to get it right. And so as we come to worship you, both in person and virtually, we simply ask that you will show up in this place that you will be present, that you will sit down beside us, that you would hear our petitions and our prayers. Oh Lord, won't you please come by here. Now is a needy time. We need you, Lord, come by here this morning. And if you show up, we'll be sure to give you all of the praise and all of the glory. We simply ask this morning, you find the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength, our rock, and our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And now let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thine will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. seated. We'll now have our announcements. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see you all this morning. It's certainly that the Lord is blessing us today. Oh, yes. We look forward to have and to listen to hear and to digest a very very warm and important message from our shepherd this morning, and we look forward to that indeed. I noticed that um, he is so accustomed to preaching that he never stopped. He just went straight through, and we appreciate that and love him. So we look forward to um, our offering. You want to ask the ushers to come forward, please? Okay. I'm sorry. Sister Denise has an announcement. This is more, good morning, everyone. Good morning. This is more or less a review of uh, thanks for everyone who participated and helped with the farewell concert. We had a glorious hallelujah time. I don't know about you in the audience, but I know singing up here, we were just having an awesome time. So, but we, in organizing all of it, we just want to say thank you to everyone who came, everyone who participated. 
uh, who lended a hand, who donated money, who bought a ticket, who helped out at the door, who helped downstairs. Everyone, we are so, so very, very thankful to you for helping us to make that concert a, a wonderful, wonderful experience. Um, so we thank not only for our church, but for, on behalf of Reverend Meekins and the Power of Music Ministry, that includes all the many churches around the Nassau County area and a couple in Suffolk who came to participate with us. They came to rehearsals in, in addition to their own choir business that they were taking care of. They participated with us. They love coming to sing with us and we thank you for supporting that effort. We look forward to doing more things with them in the future. We look forward to next year's Power of Music. We're gonna keep it moving and we're hoping to, um, to have some of those same churches and a few more come and participate with us at our Christmas concert. So we're not done. We're not gonna be slow. We're not gonna be non-existent. We're not gonna pause. We're gonna keep it moving forward and we hope that you will do the same with us. So thank you so very, very, very much. We appreciate you and we look forward to more and more singing and more and more music. If you wanna participate, don't worry about it, Miss Elliot, Nigel, they do miracles with people who can't sing, who think they can't sing, who think they can't sing. I mean, Miss Elliot can make a person who's hard of hearing sound like a star. She can make anybody sound like a star. Just be willing to try and put the effort in. So please come out and participate if you'd like to, if you dream about it, fantasize about it, make your fantasy come true. This is a good fantasy, so thank you again. Good morning, church. Good morning. I know I said we didn't have any announcement, but it is remiss of me not to mention that we do have guest speaker, Reverend Tiller, today, and that he will be preaching with us again throughout um, July and August. So we want to really welcome him and just encourage everybody to come out and support. Um, the search committee is in you know, progress and they're doing what they need to do. So just to let everybody keep in the loop to know that we are taking care of worship service every Sunday and we will continue to be the Congregational Church of South Hempstead moving forward. Okay. Thank you very much.
God, we thank you so much for this day. Oh, thank, yes. thank you, Lord God, for all that you have done for us. We are not going to forget at all at any time because you have been good to us. We thank you for this offering that is presented by your people. And we ask your many blessings on it, Lord God, so that it may be used for the expanding the kingdom of God. We give you thanks and bless those who are able to give and those who are not able to give. In Jesus' name we pray. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Good morning again. We'll now have our scripture reading by Sister Shirley. Good morning, church. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in oh, it. Oh, yes. Yes. Okay, the scripture readings for today is Numbers chapter 11, verses 18 to 23. You could perhaps follow me on the monitors. Thank you. Verses 18. Tell the people, consecrate yourselves in preparation for tomorrow when you will eat meat. The Lord heard you when you wailed. If only we had meat to eat. You are better off in Egypt. Now the Lord will give you meat and you will eat it. You will not eat it for just one day or two days or five, ten or twenty days, but for a whole month until, come, until it comes out of your nostrils and you loathe it because you have rejected the Lord who is among you and have wailed before him saying, why did we ever leave Egypt? But Moses said, here I am among 600,000 men on foot, and you say, I will give them meat to eat for a whole month. Would they have enough if flocks and herds were slaughtered for them? Would they have enough if all the fish in the sea were caught for them? The Lord answered Moses, Is the Lord's arm too short? Now you will see whether or not what I say will come true for you. Then we're going to be reading Numbers chapter 12, verses 4 to 9. At once the Lord said to Moses, Aaron, and Miriam, Come out to the tent of meeting, all three of you. So the three of them went out. Then the Lord came down in a pillar of cloud. He stood at the entrance to the tent and summoned Aaron and Miriam. When the two of them stepped forward, he said, Listen to my words. When there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, reveal myself to them in visions. I speak to them in dreams. But this is not true of my service, Moses. He is faithful in all my house. With him I speak face to face, clearly and not in riddles. He sees the form of the Lord. Why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? The anger of the Lord burned against them, and he left them. And the last reading is Numbers chapter 13, verse 30. Then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, We should go up and take possession of the land, for we can certainly do it. May the Lord add a blessing to the readings of his holy word. Amen. of um, information about the shepherd today and after that uh, you will hear the singing from the choir. Thank you. Uh, good morning church 
as you've heard and as you can see, we have with us this morning uh, the Reverend Conrad Tillard. The Reverend Conrad Bennett Tillard Sr. has been a minister, educator, activist, radio talk show host over 35 years. He previously pastored at the Flatbush Tompkins Congregational Church in Brooklyn, a congregation affiliated with the National Association of Congregational Christians. Reverend Tillard is also the former senior minister of the Nazarene Congregational Church, a 140-year-old United Church of Christ congregation in Bedford-Stuyvesant, where he served from 2006 to 2016. Prior to that, the Reverend Tillard served as the interim senior pastor of the 185-year-old Elliott Congregational Church UCC in the Roxbury community in Boston, Massachusetts. Today he leads black clergy for economic empowerment. Reverend Tillard is a Baptist and congregational minister licensed and ordained at the historic Abyssinia Baptist Church of the city of New York under the late Reverend Calvin Butts. He's affiliated with the National Association of Congregational Christian Churches National Baptist Convention, the American Baptist Churches, and has held dual standing with the Metropolitan Association of the United Church of Christ New York Conference. The Reverend Conrad Tillard is a graduate of the University of Pennsylvania of Union Theological Seminary and Princeton Theological Seminary. He has also completed graduate work at Harvard Divinity School and is currently working toward completing a Doctor of Ministry degree at Duke Divinity School. So let's welcome the Reverend Conrad Tillard this morning. Uh, and uh, we'll ha now have a selection from the choir after which you'll hear the voice of Reverend Conrad Tillard. Thank you. It is said that the shepherd usually has a very strong relationship with the sheep, but there is one thing that the sheep has to do when he enters the fold, and that is listen to the voice of the shepherd.
right. church say amen. Thank you, thank you so much choir for your enthusiastic uh, selections this morning. Uh, I enjoyed your choir director getting you ready. She was driving you this morning as I was sitting back there. Amen. It is my uh, distinct pleasure to be here with you this morning. Uh, I have never been to this church, but I've heard about you for many years. And uh, of course, your former pastor, uh, Pastor Dugan, is a very, very, very good friend of mine. In fact, uh, I greatly respect him, and I pray the Lord will bless him in the next phase of his ministry. We were in Israel together back in 2013, and I hadn't seen him much since then, but I'm just grateful for what the Lord will do in his life next. I um, uh, was blessed to uh, get out here this morning uh, on, on uh, Long Island Railroad. And uh, it's such a blessing. Um, my automobile needs brakes and uh, that, that mechanic of mine couldn't get to my vehicle uh, last week. Uh, hopefully he'll get to it by Tuesday. Uh, but then I said, wow, how am I going to get to Long Island? And, you know, when you uh, sometimes live in the five boroughs, you let that five borough mentality overtake you. And you feel like if you got to go somewhere off of the trains, you'll fall off the side of the earth. <laughs> but uh, it really wasn't that difficult to get out here. I just went to my local Long Island Railroad station on Nostrand Avenue, and it was a straight shot from there after I transferred at Jamaica. So God is good. Uh, I, 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 I am very, very grateful. Uh, my uh, talk to you today, the sermonic thought that I want you to wrestle with is uh, three responses to God in times of trouble. Three responses to God in times of trouble. Pray with me for just a moment. Father God, we thank you for this preaching moment. We thank you for this expectant and wait, awaiting congregation. Lord, we ask that you would bless us to open up our hearts and our minds as we pursue our relationship with you in the words of Howard Thurman with both the head and the heart. We pray, Lord, that you would allow this inadequate vessel to carry forth your perfect word, that more of thee and less of me is seen and heard this morning. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Three responses to God in times of trouble. One of the great mistakes that we make in Western society, particularly in the United States of America, is that we do not understand what love really is and, and what it looks like. And often this manifests in our own lives, but it also manifests in our view of God and God's relationship with Israel. God loved Israel, Israel the people of the Bible. Uh, one of the first things I learned in the Old Testament class in seminary is that when a preacher talks about Israel in the Bible, uh, that is not the same as talking about Israel the state that exists today, but ancient Israel, biblical Israel the people 
God, God loved Israel. But, but God sometimes tries those that he loves. Sometimes God tries those that he loves most, most harshly. You know the story of Job. Job was a righteous man, uh, almost blameless, and yet God tried him in a most severe way. God tries those that he loves. Maybe we should do that sometimes. But we have such a hallmark view of love, Hollywood view of love, and that is that when you love somebody, you give them everything that they want. <laughs> uh, and I guess that's what's wrong with some of the marriages in our society, because when the going is, it gets rough and the giving stops, uh, maybe uh, that's when the love goes out the window. But, but look at it. God loved Israel. God brought Israel out of slavery. God uh, literally brought them out of bondage. Any, uh, any comparison or any similarity to you and your people and the folk you know is not entirely accidental. God brought them out. He loved them. And he had a prime place for them place that would have uh, abundant land, a place that would have rich and fertile soil. Indeed, it would be a land of milk and honey. But you see, God tries those that he loves. He never stopped loving Job. He was just confident that no matter what Job endured, he would not lose faith. And uh, God tried Israel. Now I want you to think about this. Because God tries us sometimes. And Israel watched Pharaoh's army drown in the Red Sea. They watched the plagues that were brought upon Pharaoh. They knew God was working with them, just like us. How many blessings can we not only remember, but how many blessings are we walking around in every day, driving in? Hugging and picking up and kissing children and grandchildren. How many blessings are we going to every morning? God has blessed us richly and abundantly. How many of you can look back over the wheel of time and remember how far he's brought you? from a mighty and long way. Where'd you start in life? And where are you now? Where'd your grandparents start? And how much better is your life than theirs? Oh, God has brought us from a mighty long way. But you know, sometimes folk forget how good God has been even with all of the blessings that we know. And that's what Israel did. God had a prime place for them. God brought them out of bondage, but God had to try them and test them and get them ready for the blessing. And, and their test just happened to be that they would find themselves in the wilderness. And the wilderness was an uncomfortable place. If you've traveled to the Holy Land, you know that it is a very hot, arid, and dry part of the world. Someone posted on Facebook the other day in Phoenix, it was 122 degrees 
my Lord. I didn't even know folk could live in 122 degrees. But when you go to the Holy Land, these are the temperatures that you sometimes encounter. Very, very dry, very arid, very rocky and thorny terrain. Sometimes it looks as though nothing on earth, nothing human could inhabit that place. And after the great blessings and the bounty that God blessed them with, they found themselves in numbers in the wilderness. And I want to just raise them for consideration because they are very instructive for us. What do you do? What should be the appropriate response to God in times of trouble in your own life when you find yourself in the wilderness? Well, I'd like for you to consider three, three responses. Now, in Numbers 11, the people out in the wilderness had been complaining. They had been eating this stuff called manna from heaven. And I'm told it's a, never had it, but it's almost like a, a, a olive oil based bread. Or, I, I'm told it's pretty good. But, but after eating it morning, noon, or night, they got a little tired. Now they could have said, thank God we didn't starve. Thank God that we are just able to lay down and wake up and there's food there. But they complained about the food. You ever had children and you worked all week to get groceries? You ever had folk in your house that you slaved over the kitchen to make a meal? And when you called them to the table and said, it's dinner time, they say, what, what's for dinner? Uh, you tell them, they say, oh, I don't want to eat that old stuff. How does that make you feel? Well, imagine how God felt. I brought these folks out of bondage and I'm giving them manna from heaven, and they want meat. Well, God said, okay, I tell you what, since your response to me is to doubt me, I'm gonna give you meat, all right. In fact, I'm gonna give you so much meat that by the time you get through eating the meat and it starts coming out of you in every possible way, you won't want to see meat anywhere, anytime, any soon, because I was good to you. I blessed you. I brought you forth. I told you I had a prime place for you, but you couldn't be patient, and you doubted my word. See, we never want to doubt the word of God. See, when, when, when someone tests you, they, they want to know I, I got something for you, but I want to know that you trust me, that you, that you know I will deliver. You remember when we were children and our parents promised us if we did good in school, we'd get a bike, we'd get a puppy, we'd get something special for Christmas. Now, they had already bought it. They knew that they were gonna give it to us. But every day we said, Mama, you gonna get that bike for me? Daddy, am I gonna get that dog? Son, I told you, if you just do what you're supposed to do, you do your part and don't worry. And yet, in the immature mind, there is a lack of comfort. There is a anxiety and a need to always know are you gonna fulfill your promise? Are you gonna do what you said you did? And how proud are we of our children when we tell them, if you do this, I'm going to do that. And they don't ask us, but they just go about meeting the obligation. And it brings us so much joy 
when they've been good, to be able to say, here's what I promised you, love. I, I hope it brings joy to you. We get joy just in giving to them. That's what God wanted to do to Israel. But they doubted God. And, that, and that's a response that we don't want to have to God. God promises that I will not leave you nor forsake you. And I don't care if it's in the hospital room, in the operating room. I don't care if it's in the courtroom. Uh, trust and never doubt. The second response that you don't want to have in times of trouble with God is to act ugly and ungodly. And you see, Moses was God's servant. Moses was loved by God. He himself had been tried in the fiery furnace of affliction. For God rose him up and told him to go to the most powerful man in the world and say, thus saith the Lord my God, let my people go. God tested Moses, and Moses lived up to all of God's expectations. Oh, he wasn't perfect, as no human being is, but he brought great joy and pleased God. He was a godly man. And unfortunately, when there's insecurity and doubt, instead of turning to each other, people often turn on each other. You've seen this. Oh, I've been doing funerals a long time. And I tell you something, some of the ugliest stuff that you ever want to see takes place after a death. People fight over this. They fight over that. Who's going to get mama's shoes and mama's fur coat and Who's going to be the executor of the will and make sure I get my cut when we sell the property? And, and oh, what child is that? I, I, didn't, I, I didn't know daddy had that child. I mean, you see all kind of stuff at funerals. When people should be turning to each other, they often turn on each other. And that's what they did in the wilderness. Uh, their response to God in times of trouble was to act ugly. And so they acted ugly against Moses. Uh, every time he went away to talk to God, they organized and uh, they would all but build graven images. And, and this time, his, 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 his own family members start murmuring against him and they, they were angry that he married an Ethiopian wife, and they began to create all kind of problems. See, that's what you don't want to do with God. In times of trouble, don't ever act ugly. Don't ever, there's no need to. The Lord said, I'll make a way for you. I am a way maker. Trust and obey. I'll see you through. See, when that spirit gets in us, when we get insecure, we're waiting on a job, we don't know what's happening in our relationship, we hit a lull, and all of a sudden now, we start acting real ugly. That's the time to get on your knees and ask the Lord, Lord, I'm very insecure now. Lord, I, I don't know what's going to happen. Lord, I feel woefully inadequate to get through this stretch. I need you, Lord. Hold my hand while I run this race. Lord, don't let me run this race in vain. Lord, put your whole armor around me. Lord, gird my loins. Lord, when I look back over my life in the sands of time, I notice that you walk side beside with me. But, 
But now when I look back, I only see one set of footprints. See, when you turn to the Lord in times of trouble, in times of insecurity, and not act ungodly or ugly, that's when God has the chance to say to you what he said to the beloved in the footsteps prayer that got it confused because they saw two sets of footprints most of the time, but in the most difficult days, they only saw one. But because that person spoke honestly to God, revealed their honest questions to God instead of acting ugly, the Bible tells us that in one day, Job lost everything. The Bible says messenger after messenger came and knocked on his door. Your property's gone. Your, your land is gone. Your, your livestock is gone. And the final messenger knocked on his door and said, all of your children were eating and sleeping, eating and, and fellowshipping at their oldest brother's house. And a wind came and, and blew the building down upon them. And, and all, only I have escaped. They're all dead. And only I have escaped to come back and tell you. And the Bible says that in that, the worst moment in Job's life, he covered himself in sackcloth and ashes. And he said these words, naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. The Lord gave, and now the Lord has taken away. But still, still I praise the name of the Lord. The Bible says Job did not sin and charge God with wrongdoing. Or when you get insecure, never respond to God by being ugly or ungodly. Because that's what he told the beloved in the footsteps prayer. Yeah, I, I, I know. Most times I just walk by you because I knew you could handle it. But the reason why you see one set of footprints in the worst times is because I knew your legs were not strong enough and I just picked you up and carried you through the storms. See? Never be ugly. Never be ungodly or insecure. Just call on God. And I leave you with the final response, and this is the one that I strive to achieve every day. It's difficult, because sometimes I have to fight doubt. And yes, even preachers, even deacons, <clears throat> even trustees, even prayer warriors, church mothers, and faithful Christians have been known to act ugly at times, in times of trouble. But that last response is what we all should strive for. You see, old Caleb was a young man of a new generation. And Moses and Aaron were preparing the future because we always have to be forward thinking. You know, life is, we're all just pilgrim travelers. None of us will be here forever. Uh, we're just passing through, and we got to prepare the next generation to step forward and lead. And, and Moses was doing this, and one of the young fellows that he was bringing up was a fellow by the name of Caleb. And he gave Caleb a, a job to do, he and 11 others. He said, go and check out the promised land. And uh, they, they, they went and they got to the promised land and they saw indeed <clears throat> it was a land of milk and honey. It was a land of, of, of fertile soil. It was a land that they could build a world. It was a land where they could see their, their children growing up in and their future. But there was one problem. When they got back and gave the report, out of the 11, 
that went on the scouting party, at least 10 of them agreed that it was a great land, agreed that it was, it was, it was a prime place. But they, again, they doubted. They, again, acted ugly. For they tried to discourage others from believing it was possible by saying it's giants in the land. Oh, it's nice, but, but, but we can't get it. It's nice, but, but, but we'll get slaughtered. It, it, it's just a bad idea. Let's forget it and figure something else out. But you know, the best response to God, and I'm finished, in times of trouble is to say what Caleb, after hearing all of that negativity, stepped forward and said, and that is simply, we should go up and take possession of the land, for we can certainly do it. And I leave you today saying that God is a good God. And God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. And God desires for us to succeed in life, to know joy. God desires for us to be happy, to experience love, Oh, it doesn't mean we won't sometimes experience challenges. But our faith should carry us in the midst of those storms. And sometimes, my beloved brothers and sisters, we don't know the way. We don't know that things are going to work out. And that's why we are called to faith and not empirical evidence. We're called simply to faith, to believe, and to trust. It's a great songwriter in the church that penned a very, very wonderful hymn. We sing it often. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way when we do his good will he abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus than to trust and obey. You know the hymn, right? Well, it came about one night at a revival. Old Moody was preaching. And people had come from miles around. And one young man had come and heard the message. And when the pastor made the altar call, he stepped forward. And the pastor asked him, brother, do you give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ? And that young man said, what we have to say sometimes, but it's all right. That's what Caleb said. That's what Moses said. He didn't know the way. He just kept walking forward. And that young man said, well, I, I don't know. I, 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 I can't tell you exactly, but I tell you what I will do. I'm going to trust and obey. And that's the best response to God in the times of trouble. Trust and obey. Trust and obey to be happy in Jesus. All you got to do is trust and obey. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen. 
We give God the praise this morning. We thank God for you and thank God for the spirit of the Lord that's in this place this morning. If you have never given your life to the Lord Christ, if you have never ever been baptized, uh, if you have not been in church for a long time, if you have no church home, won't you consider this morning uh, giving your hand to the preacher as you give your heart to God. The doors of the church are open now for anyone. All are welcome. As the choir sings, the music plays, the doors of the church are open this morning. Let the church say amen. amen. Come if you will. Come if you will. Church of Old. Father God, we thank you for this day of worship. We thank you for all that you have done. You filled our hearts with your songs. You filled our hearts with the fellowship. And we're thankful, God, for the message. But most of all, we are thankful for each other. Be with us as we leave this place, but never your presence. O oh God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, thou who has brought us thus far along the way, thou who is by thy might, led us into the light. Keep us forever in your path, we pray. And now may the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit Rest, rule, and abide with us all now, henceforth and forevermore, world without end. Amen.
God bless you. Just another day of blessings. I think we enjoy this beautiful, wonderful message from this reverend. And we look forward to having him again and again and again until. You know, there are two things that I gathered from this great message. I remember years ago when I was going to school, teacher used to refer to the the 10 lepers which, who were cured by Jesus. And uh, only one of them returned to say thank you. And Jesus said, we're not the 10, we are the others. My teacher said to us, and gratefulness is one of the worst diseases exist among humanity. So with all, we should always be grateful whenever someone has done something for us. Sir, we enjoyed your sermon, and I'm pretty sure that we have been blessed from it, and we look forward to you. And uh, a lot of us, including myself, know where we are. We have an idea where we are going, but we don't remember where we are coming from, and that is not good. So may God bless you all, and I look forward to see you, look forward to see everyone next Sunday. Thanks again.